Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a wavy line gravity dye. I have the shirt turned inside out and I'm going to use a washable marker and draw a wavy line from one shoulder of the shirt to the opposite hem of the shirt. Now I'm going to fan fold this line and I'm going to hold all the folds in place with some sinew. I made the fan folds pretty small and so I have a lot of fabric. I found when I was trying to tie the line with sinew, it kept buckling or I kept getting gaps underneath the sinew. Because of this, my line is not going to remain white and it will allow dye to get underneath that area. For this design, I don't really mind though. If I wanted to keep that area white, and I wanted to form a white line, I would need to unwrap the sinew and try again. I'm going to do a gravity dye on this shirt. So the setup that I'm going to use is I have a metal drying rack and I've placed a piece of vinyl guttering over the top of the drying rack. Then I've placed the shirt on top of the piece of vinyl guttering then I'm going to add the eyes to a metal container, which I'm going to stick on top of the shirt. Initially, I was just going to put the die over the top of the ice, but since I can't see my line, I went ahead and set the ice over to the side for a few minutes. On this shirt, I'm going to use two colors. On one side of the sinew line, I'm using Spicy Plum from Pro Chemical and Dye. Then on the other side of the sinew line, I'm going to use Stormy Sky from Pro Chemical and Dye. Both of these colors have really cool color splits, so I'm only going to use these two colors on this shirt. Now I'm going to place the ice back on top and add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the ice. I'm going to add quite a few layers of ice to this shirt, so I want to add some additional soda ash over the top just to make sure that when I keep adding ice to the shirt, it doesn't rinse out all the soda ash that's in the shirt from the initial soak that I did on the shirt. I have to have some soda ash in the shirt to react with the dye. I'm also going to add a little bit of additional ice over the top. It was probably about 105 degrees outside the day that I did this shirt, so the ice melted really fast. I kept adding layers of ice to the shirt until the dye had reached the outer portions of the fabric. Then I left the shirt alone and I allowed it to process for probably about 12 hours. It did go ahead and dry out, but that's fine. As hot as it was, it had plenty of time for the dye to bond properly with the fabric. I've been doing these gravity dyes outside underneath the trees that I have in the backyard. So they're getting the heat from being outside, but they aren't getting the direct sunlight on them. The trees are kind of shielding that. So after the shirt processed, I went ahead and took it into my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water to rinse out any of the soda ash that might still be left in the shirt. If for some reason 
you're doing a gravity dye and you can't seem to add enough ice to get that dye to flow on down to the outer edges of the shirt, you can go back and add a little bit more dye here and there. I don't think I had to do that on this shirt. I think the amount that I added initially was plenty to make it all the way to the edges of the shirt. But as you're adding more layers of ice to the shirt, you can see, I mean, if there's not any dye left on the shirt and it's pretty much all dissolved, but it hasn't made it down to the outer edges of the shirt, you can add just a little bit more in places if you need to. Then at some point I went ahead and warmed the water up to hot to try to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I also untied that sinew line and continued rinsing until the water was rinsing almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some of Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it on a hot water cycle. So now that the shirt has been washed and dried, here's what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this shirt is beautiful. Can you believe that's just two colors? So the top portion of the shirt is the stormy sky and the bottom portion of the shirt is the spicy plum. And like I said, these two colors have beautiful color splits. The blue colors up on that top portion mixed with like some of the greens and burgundy-ish type colors look really pretty. And then down on the bottom portion, that spicy plum splits out a lot of green. If you remember when I initially put it on the shirt, the dye color is actually green. And there are quite a few of the pro chemical colors that are that way. Like dusty purple is one of those. And that's one of my favorite pro chemical colors. It is purple when you liquid dye with it, but when you use it for ice dye, it's purple and then it has a green split, which I think is really cool. And that's pretty much what this same spicy plum does. It is that kind of reddish color, but then it has the cool green and yellow color splits that come out of it. So one of the things that I really, really love about this technique is the dye movement. You know, I'm a huge fan of doing inclined ice dyes and anything that yields quite a bit of dye movement. I just think it gives a lot of interest to the shirt for the dye to have moved and flowed a little bit and have those flow lines over against just having solid colors of dye in various places on the shirt. Don't get me wrong, I think they both have their place, but I'm a sucker for dye movement. I just really love shirts that have a lot of flow and movement to them. And these gravity dyes, that's where it's at. I mean, one little line going through the middle of the shirt and then I went all the way to the very outer edges of the shirt. And of course, I like the fact that it's darker right along that initial line. And then the colors just kind of get lighter as they progress away from that line. I think that's just a beautiful effect. I've added a couple of up close pictures of the shirt just so that you can kind of see how the dye moved in some of the color splits. When you look at it up close, there are a lot more colors that you start to catch, like the yellows and some of the blues and pinks and greens, turquoise colors. It's just really pretty. Those two colors are great dye colors if you're wanting a lot of color splits. So overall, I love this shirt. I think it looks really pretty. And what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you like these two colors? Drop me some comments down below and let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed watching me make this shirt, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.